Hi, in this video we're going to work with generics again and in this example we're going to create a class that will take an array of elements and print them regardless of their data type. So the first thing we're going to do is create a project and I'm going to call it generic printer demo. Inside the source folder I'm going to create another class and let's call this thing uh, my array. And I will create a main element in it as well. So in this first method here, I'm going to create a method called public void print array. And it's expecting an array of integers. So inside of the method of the body of the method, I'm going to do a loop and loop through all the integers and print the array. All right, so now in the main section of my method, I am going to create a list of integers in an array. So let's do 98, 97, 96, 95, and then we can call this um, item and print it. So now we should be able to create an instance of this class called myArray and then call the method printArray and we should see all these items print. So now I want to convert this from a regular array of integers into something that will handle all data types. And so generics is what we need. So let's say we wanted to run this same method, but instead of printing integers, I want to print an array of characters. And as you can see, as I try to call the print array function, that it will not accept the character array. And so it says you have a problem. I'm expecting integers and you gave me an array of characters. So what we need to do is convert this method from a regular integer array into something that will handle any kind of generic type. So I'm going to modify the string up here. I'm going to put in a bracket with a capital E. So E is a generic name. It stands for element. And so I could have used T, but sometimes we use E as well. And so I'm going to change the data types in here from integers into E's. And now you can see that the error goes away and we can do print array and we can do int array. So when I print both of them, I get the numbers first and then all the letters in the character array. And so here's the challenge to finish it off. So I've created an array of integers and array of characters. I want you to create some more arrays. So look at the other data types that are possible and print two more of those and we can have an example of another generic class that accepts generic uh, data types. There, hopefully you've had a chance to uh, type in a few extra arrays. You can see I've continued on. I've done a string array, a float array, and a double array. And you can see I have strings, floats, and doubles in my uh, arrays, and they should all print naturally. So let's see what they do. So I print, and you can see I have colors and the floats and the doubles. So it seems to work fine. Now I'm going to uh, limit my types so right up here at the top where it says public E, I have absolutely every kind of data type available to this function. Let's say I'm only going to use numbers. So I could put in here an extra qualifier. I can say extends. So this type extends what kind? Let's say number. And now we should see an error on some of our arrays. So you see down here I've got two lines, number 20 and 21, that don't work anymore. So character array and string array are both disqualified now. And so what's it say in my uh, help? It says uh, the array type is not applicable for character. And this one says the array type is not applicable for strings. So I can't run this anymore because I have limited my um, extension here to just numbers. So let's, uh, let's take away the uh, two lines here that are offending us and try to run it again. And so now you can see that every different type that has a number works. So integers, floats, and doubles seem to work now because I've extended E just to the number area. 